Hey everybody, this is Organic Dairyman, and uh, I just wanted to add a few more things here before we start with the rest of part four, or just to add to the continuation of part four. Um, like I said, I've just been thinking about some more things that I felt like I should have added in, to that video, and I just kind of forgot about it. But um, I just wanted to add the fact too about, like as far as pest control in organic, and uh, um, talk just a little bit more, more a little, excuse me, a little bit more about the fertilizer and a little bit about the, uh, the, um, the dairy side of organic farming too. Um, anyways, with regards to the pests, um, if if people, I know that there's people that are worried about like having pest problems with your crops and everything. Um, like obviously, that's why. Um, I think I've mentioned it or will mention it in this video the next segment here about uh, my crop rotation crop rotation plays a huge role in pests helping to control pests obviously like if you have cut worms in your in your you know like that's why it's good not to grow corn and corn because the the larvae can survive in this or the eggs can survive in the soil for a very long time for like two years they could survive that's why it's good to do not to do a corn and corn rotation or a corn beans rotation because that way if you get small grain in there um, you break that up and um, or if you put alfalfa in your rotation you get three years of alfalfa you're going to take care of that cutworm problem and um, yeah and it kind of helps break up the pests you know the pest problems that you would normally have um, I have I, I've seen in our corn like like not problems with cutworms, but you know, or work, 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 excuse me, root worms, cutworms, root worms, same thing. But I have seen some problems like with the um, the western bean, or what do they call that? I can't think of the worm. You know, it, it's it's similar to like um, to the uh, what's that one? Um, I'm having a bad brain fart here. Um, the worm that likes to the corn bore excuse me, European corn bore that's what I think it, it's a I think it's called the Western bean cutworm or something like that or and I've seen that eat on some of our corn sometimes like it's, it's sitting there eating on the kernel kernels I have seen that every, every once in a while you'll get a little bit of that but not you know not too much but as far as like like people maybe what if they're thinking like what if I have rust like oats rust or you get you know sort of some sort of it you get a fungus fungus infection in your crop or whatever you need a fungicide or whatever there are um there are things that you can do organically to help that um there is like one thing you can do i know i've heard you could spray copper sulfate a copper sulfate solution that does act like as a natural fungicide but you have to be careful with it too that you use it sparingly because copper sulfate it can kill you know certain bacteria you know microbes in your soil and stuff too so you want to be careful um not to use too much of it and i do know that um the guy the soil consultant that we work with um he works i know that he, he can get something too that you can spray on that's that's omri listed i think it's omri listed it's organic improved that you can spray on is is a natural fungicide to ha to help with like if you have rust problems and he works with a company i think it's called i forgot to look this up before i did the video here but um i think it's called nature's best is the company that he works with um um it's out of iowa I can't think of the word is in iowa it's in, it's in kind of in northeast iowa is the company that he works with um that that sells these um, these uh, products here. I'm just looking it up on my phone here, quick. Um, I think it's called Nature's Best. But don't quote me on it. Yep, here it is. Nature's Best LLC. I think is what it is. I'll, if, if this is what it is, I'll post a link down in the description for it. And um, uh, I'm waiting for my phone to load here. 
Yeah, so, um, um, yeah, yeah, I'll put a link, yeah, I'll put a link to it, um, I'll put a link to this on the, um, on my um, description down in the video so make sure um, that you go down there and you check out that nature's best they have a lot of products um, for things like that and um, as far as like uh, like if you have aphids aphid problems you can get aphid resistant soybeans like like we get ours the pioneer um, they have them you can get that or if you don't want if you can't get a resistant and you're planting like regular organic beans um you know the, the aphid ones are non-gmo just so you know they're they're naturally the trait was naturally bred into it, it wasn't genetically engineered or anything like that uh, but they do have a product that's nature's best does have a product that you can spray on your soybeans to help combat the aphids it can it can significantly reduce the populations in there in your soybeans what it basically does the way i understand it, it increases the bricks level the sugar levels and the aphids can't handle that so um yeah and and two as far as like pests i really that's the other thing too with fertilization it's so important to fertilize your crops good as best as you can because i do think that sometimes there is a direct correlation between press press uh, excuse me pest problems and poor soil fertility and i really emphasize that that if you can you know i realize everybody has a budget and you can only afford so much of anything and but I always my philosophy is better it, better to do a little bit of something than nothing at all so you know if you have to borrow some money what well, that's what we do every year we borrow money to take up to buy fertilizer because we don't have the money in the spring you have to borrow. You take out an oper operating loan. You borrow the money to buy the fertilizer. You know, if but you know you don't have to ba break the bank to do it. You know, even if you got to put on a half of a rate of fertilizer or whatever, it's better to put on a little bit of fertilizer than to do none at all. And so at least do that. So, um, yeah, and also like I say, there is a direct correlation between poor soil fertility and pest problems because I do think that. The pests are more attracted to less nutrient dense crops than they would be. So that's the importance of fertilizing, doing a good job of fertilizing, especially if you have livestock, organic livestock or whatever. That way the animals will take that in. They have healthy animals, you know. So, and also I want to emphasize too about the fact for weed control and fertilization. Um, there is a direct correlation between poor soil fertility and certain weeds growing in your fields so remember remember that um, if you go out and you take if you have a patch of Canadian thistles or certain weeds growing in field and they're always growing in the same spot in the same go take a tissue sample of that send it in and whatever that's the highest in, put that on right there you know make sure you fertilize for that whatever element it is and you'll probably take care of the problem now, not all weeds, I might emphasize, not all weeds are going to, like, they're not all growing because you have a soil deficiency. Some weeds grow there until your soil is healthy, you know, but, um, but yeah, generally they say, like, calcium will help. I've heard calcium will help with thistles, take care of thistles. And we don't really have a bad thistle problem since we've been doing a better job of fertilizing. We never used to fertilize that much. And we started doing it more intensively in 2013. And ever since then, we've really, you know, reduced a lot of thistle problems. We have very little thistle problems. We do have some, but, you know, I've seen like out in the field sometimes we have little patches and they'll come and they'll go. Sometimes they'll get bigger and sometimes they'll get smaller. Sometimes they'll just disappear. Um, I've seen that. But I do know that fertilization will help with thistle problems. If you've got Canadian thistles or whatever, it does help, you know. And if you have, if you've got foxtail growing in your field, that's usually a, a sign of a very bad soil fertility. If you've got foxtail, I don't know what you call it. 
in weird regions we call it foxtail because it looked, the the head of it looks like a fox's tail you know um and pigeon grass yeah pigeon grass that's another problem we have sometimes with that pigeon grass usually likes to grow in compacted soil so it seems like it does it likes to grow flourish good in there um but that could be a soil compaction issue too if you have a lot of pigeon grass sometimes but I guess the best thing is, like I say, um, is just you know, do a good job at soil fertility, and and um, and like I say, that has a direct correlation. And of course, then getting to the dairy part of things, um, if you don't know this already, if you're going to transition to organic, um, you're going to transition your herd to organic someday, someday I say. Um, you have to your cows have to graze on pasture if you did not know that you do know that now your cows have to be in pasture before we went organic we had never grazed our cows grazing was something new to us we had to learn how to graze you know we didn't know obviously now we've learned you know so for us when we went organic it was a big learning experience a big huge stepping stone for us um so just keep in mind if if you know when we first started going organic, like I say, we had a ton of questions. We didn't a lot of things we didn't know about, and uh, it was just a big leap of faith for us when we went organic. So um, it was a learning curve, a huge learning curve for us. So keep in mind, if we did it, you can do it too. Um, um, yeah. So um, I know I'm going to do a video separately from this series about. You know organic livestock in general best specifically the cows I can't speak so much on like pigs like if you have a hog operation or whatever that you want to convert to organic or chickens but I could help you you know like the dairy cows and maybe even some beef cows because there is organic beef out there if you didn't know that um, um, you can market your your stock cows your beef um, organic valley they have a separate well it's it's they're both the same company but they have it's like I can't think of the term um, but they're kind of together but they have a, you know organic valley is more like the it's more like the meat end of or not the meat the the dairy end and then they have another one company they're the same company but they call it organic prairie and they do like the pork and the meat and stuff like that and you know I know right now they're actually looking for for more meat um, so yeah so if you have beef and you if, you know beef cows and you're interested in doing that that's a route you can take but i can you know i can help you guys i can hook you up with people so but i'm thinking i'm getting everything i'm trying to cover everything i'm probably still missing some things here but i mean you know there's so much information but like i say go down and check out that nature's best in the description down there they have a lot of great products and one thing you can do too as far as you know getting back to the fertilizer is you can you can spray it on if you guys got an if you got a sprayer you were that you were using to spray you know spray your crops with clean it out really good um rinse it out and get it cleaned out really good you can actually spray um foliar spray fertilizer on your crops during the growing season to actually help you know Especially like your hay too. You could build up the bricks in your hay, the sugars in your hay by spraying things. There's, they've got stuff you could spray in your corn to help boost them. Give it a little more nitrogen. Even for your beans, they've got stuff that's nature's best. Our soil consultant, he works with this this guy. Um, matter of fact, his phone number is listed down in there. I just saw that. Um, um, but yeah. Um, if you guys have questions, I could, you know, I'll get you the answers. I'll try to get you the answers um, some way. I'll try to, you know, get you. But you guys, you seriously, you guys have things a lot better now than we did when we, when we went, um, or first went organic back. We started the process back in 2003. I wish we had YouTube. I don't even think YouTube wasn't even around then. I wish... You know, I had found you. You know, if they're you know had access to YouTube and a YouTube channel to watch somebody like 
you know, telling me, explaining us all this stuff. But, you know, you guys really do have the advantage today. There's so much more resources out there. So, anyways, I think I've said everything I need to say. If you have, guys, have more questions, drop them down there in the comment section below. And uh, please read through, you know, read through the uh, comments down in the comment section because you're going to learn things from other organic farmers that are commenting on this. So, like I say, and make sure you go down in the description. So, anyways, I'm going to send you, or you guys can finish watching the rest of part four right here. You can farm organically. It is possible to do it. It's going to require more work. But you can do it. Um, <clears throat> I tell you what, one thing that keeps me going, one other thing that keeps me going is sometimes I'm out farming and I look over at my neighbor's soybean field and it's like, gosh, he's got, or his corn field. Boy, their fields are so clean. Look at the ears, of the, you know, look at that, you know, everything. And then I get to thinking to myself, well, yeah, they might have good looking soybeans. And there might be maybe 50, 60 bushel soybeans. Maybe the corn is 200 plus. But then eh, it ain't worth much. Yeah, the price is, yeah, I wouldn't want to go back to that price, you know. You know, eight some dollar soybeans and three something dollar corn, maybe even less than that. You know, then I get to think, yeah, I'm glad I do organic. Because if you can get, you know, like this year we, on, on one of our organic corn fields here, we average 190 bushel corn. Um, you can get, I've seen some organic farmers get 50 bushel beans, some, some, Someone can even get 60. So you can compete with conventional. It just takes a little more work. You can do it. You put your mind to it, you can do anything, right? <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see what else. I, I'm hoping I got everything, but the other thing I want to stress too is you got to do a lot of record keeping. Um, you gotta, like I said, you got to keep seed tags, seed receipts. Things like that because you're gonna when you when you get the third year you're gonna wanna call up an organic certifier the third year that you because that's when your crops will be considered organic you want to do that because you're gonna want to get inspected and make sure you keep um, good records you're gonna have to have a field plan you're gonna have to get a, a portfolio you're gonna have to um, number all your fields you got fields one two three four five six what how many fields you have that are organic. You're going to have to have a plan for that field. They're going to want to see that. And like, okay, I've got, this year I'm going to put soybeans in this field. This field's going to corn. Field two is, or field three is going into hay. Whatever it is that you're going to do. You got to have a plan. They want to see that. Um, don't try to cheat. I can't, can't emphasize that enough. Do not cheat. If you cheat, your conscience will get the best of you. You'll, you'll lay awake at night worrying about it. Don't do it. Um, if you do get caught cheating, it's one strike and you're out. It's zero tolerance. You can never, you can never sort of, you can never sell a crop organic ever again. People have done it. It does not pay to cheat. Don't do it. Um, like I say, you'll you'll lay you'll lie awake at night worrying about it. It'll keep you up at night. I guarantee. So don't do it. <laughs> and um yep it's good old-fashioned hard work that's what it is and but if you want to get that extra money that's what you have to do you have to work a little harder sometimes to get a little extra money but you know it's not too bad grain organic grain farming it isn't that bad really another thing i can't i'd like to stress too is go to or some organic conference um maybe find one in your area to go to there's small ones like here we have one regional called the Northern Plains Sustainable Egg Conference. They have one every year. Um, this year it's going to be in Fargo, North Dakota. I'm not sure the dates, but you can go to the website and find that one out. If you're in this region, tri-state region, Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, you can do that. There's the, 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 like the biggest one nationwide in the United States is in La Crosse, Wisconsin. It's called uh, Moses. Um, that's the name of the conference. You know, I don't know what the acronym is. The Midwest. I, I don't know what it stands for, but um, that's like the mecca of all organic conferences in the United States. You know, that's the one that you, you want to attend. It's coming up in February. Um, I just say that because it's good to go to these things because it helps to inspire you. It's good to be around like-minded people that think like you do. 
it, it just it's an it's an encouragement booster it helps you to um it gets you excited about it you know because you learn you share ideas with other people and they share things with you you learn it the latest and greatest um, one of the things that they're working on in organic is robotic weeding um, they're working on that they're getting better at it you're going to someday see robotic weeders out there you know weed things out there weeding your fields it is a reality um, that's the next thing you know that's like the equivalent to Monsanto's Roundup Ready stuff, their GMO stuff. You know, except this is robots doing the weeding, you know, taking care of the weeds. It, it's going to come. It's going to come. So, the future, in a, you know, the future is, is going to look better for organic. And just remember this, too. The other thing, too, organic farming, it's not as easy. Obviously, it's not as easy as conventional farming. If they made it easy then every farmer would want to do it and it would take away from the incentive there would be you know from doing it you know there, there would just be there'd be no money in it then so that's why they make it hard and they make it difficult so that way it you know it, it kind of weeds out the the people that are just in it for the wrong reasons so it's going to be harder so i'm going to tell you that right now it's not going to be as easy as you think but it is doable. We do it. We do it for, you know, we've been doing it for 16 years. So you have, you can see that from, from me. So, um, yeah. So, um, gosh, guys, I don't know. But that's all I can say is, is go to an organic conference. Another thing I can say is get to know other organic farmers. Connection, connection, connection. You cannot have enough connections when you're organic. The more, the better. Um, we have a lot of connections and marketing your grain. That's one thing I want to talk about too. You're going to say, where am I going to market my organic grain? There's different places you can market it through. Um, there's regional things you could do it. There's national things. The biggest thing that we do, um, we market ours through national farmers organization, NFO. Um, they do it nationally. Um, like organic Valley, they have a feed department. They also have a grower pool. Um, there's always dairy farmers that need feed. They need corn, they need soybeans or whatever. They need hay. Um, you can work with Organic Valley. I don't know about Horizon or Stonyfield. I can't speak on their behalf because I don't know what they have. Um, but, um, you know, you can, that's some, that's an option. You can contact Organic Valley. They have like a, say, they have a, um, you go to, go to the website, you know, go to Organic Valley's website and check it out. Google Organic Valley and go to their website. They have all the information. They have a farmer hotline. You can get a hold of them. And there's different places, like I say, that you can do it. Another company that we've been working with is called F F W. Excuse me, F W Cobbs. They're located headquartered in Vermont, but they have a they have a plant. Uh, they have an elevator, you know, regional elevators, different places. They have one in Stewart, Minnesota. We've worked with them. We've had good luck. Um, there's one up in North Dakota. I'm not going to mention who they are. Because they're a bunch of crooked, well, I won't say the word, but they're um, thieves. So I'm not going to mention, I'll just say they're located in North Dakota, that's it. Uh, I'm not going to mention their names. <laughs> just, But there's other places too that you can go with. And, and if you want to grow, you can grow food food, food grade corn. If, if you're a grain farmer, you want to grow food grade corn, you can do that. <coughs> you know. Or you can grow feed grade and sell it as feed grade for for animal food. Um, if you're gonna get food grade stuff, you have to specify like the soybeans have to be food grade. If the corn is gonna be food grade, it has to be food grade. You have to specify with the certifier that it has to be food grade. Um, so the way they you know, so that you know there's certain things that you can't do. Like primarily, if it's gonna be food grade corn, it's gonna go for human consumption. You can't spread manure on it that spring. It has to be in the fall. There are certain things that you can't do. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different options um, to market your, your crops. But, um, uh, man, I don't know if I've covered everything or not. Um, there's so much information, guys. I mean, I haven't told you every single thing here, but um, what else? Um... But like I say, if, if you want to get some of the latest and greatest news and organic, go to the Rodu, Rod, Rodale Institute. 
website. Check them out. Um, there's another one in Lamberton, Minnesota, another organic research center there. Um, whew, there's, there's different universities. University of Wisconsin has stuff too. I know, I'm sure on their website, they've done limited organic research. Um, there's a lot of different options, guys, that you can do. I'm not trying to overwhelm you, but it's definitely a lot of food for thought here. So, um, yeah, I, I hope I haven't missed anything. Like I said, if I missed anything and there's any other organic farmers that are watching this, please fill in the blanks. Um, but, uh, or if I misquoted something correct, please correct me because I don't claim to have all the answers. I'm just telling you what I know. Um, from my knowledge um, but yeah but those are the, the main things you gotta you gotta you gotta have to think differently um, maybe some of your neighbors are gonna think boy he has gone off his rocker he's cuckoo he's crazy he's gonna go organic um, don't listen to your neighbor don't if your neighbor stops by your field and he's laughing at you let him laugh but at the end of the day when you're getting paid more money for your crops um, you're really the one laughing back at him, you know, so I'm not I'm just I'm just pointing out, you know Don't let people put you down. Um, I Mean I have a lot of respect for conventional farmers none of our neighbors You know maybe with the exception of one neighbor, but most of our neighbors have actually, you know They think what we're doing is a good thing. They don't have a problem with what we're doing. They've been good to us uh, we get along with all, all of our conventional neighbors, so um, we've actually borrowed equipment from our conventional neighbors before. So, I mean, they, they respect what we do. I respect what they do. We get along great, you know, so you don't have to be enemies with your neighbors. And the other thing too, is you're going to have to plan a buffer strip A 20, unless your neighbor happens to be organic or he doesn't spray or whatever, but you're going to have to plant between your land and your neighbor's land because he sprays. You're going to have to have about a 25 foot buffer strip. You can, you could either plant that to grass and just leave it or harvest the grass or plant it to alfalfa and leave it and harvest it and bale it. Or what you can do is plant crops there. You can plant your corn there, your soybeans, but you have to sell those separately. You have to harvest them separately. Um, yeah. So keep that in mind too. You have to do that. Um, and you're going to want to get some no spray signs you put around your farm because you don't want like the county or the township spraying your road ditch by your place either. So purchase, go to um, um, mid, go to that Moses website. There's, they have a website you can buy some no spray signs on there. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to post some links down in the description to help you guys out and get there quicker. But yeah, get some no spray signs. Do it right away. Even if you're transitioning your farm to organic, do it right away. Get those signs put up around your farm, on any of your farmland or whatever. We have them on ours. They're all around. People see them, they know, the, the, the county and the township, they know that they can't spray the road ditches for, for weeds broadly, whatever. Um, and another thing you do, you gotta, you gotta, if you got a conventional neighbor, you gotta send him a letter, a notification in the mail, just notifying him that you're going organic, so that way he knows. It's for liability purposes, that's why I say it's for liability, because somehow if his sprayer was to, you know, if he was to be out spraying and he killed a bunch of your crops because of it, he would be held liable for it because you say you warned him, you gave him that knowledge, so he knew. Put up, put up no spray signs next to your neighbor so that way if they have like a, um, oh, like they have the co-op come out. It's, it's a farmer, it doesn't spray it himself, but it's like somebody else. That way they're held liable if they get too far with their booms and they get some spray drift and they kill some of your crops. If they kill that section of land, you know, like in a couple acres, you're going to have to retransition that back to organic. Your neighbor is going to have to reimburse you or the company that was out spraying, they're going to have to reimburse you for that. But by all means, do not get into a dispute with your neighbor. Don't lose, you know, that friendship with your neighbor. That's the last thing you want to do. Be cordial. Be nice to your neighbor. Um, you know, that's all I can say. So... <clears throat> Oh boy, guys, I think I got an hour here for this video, so, um, <clears throat> like, if you guys have any more questions, ask them down in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer them. I'm a busy person, so I don't, I try to do my best answering people's questions, you know, in a timely manner, so just please be patient with me. <clears throat> I hope that I didn't overwhelm you guys, um, 
like I said, there's so much information. But if by all means, you can replay this video over and over and over again, you know, until, you know, um, you know, create a, you know, put it on your watch later list or create a, you know, maybe I'll create a special playlist for this video so it's easy to find and, you know, but, um, yeah, so I got to get going here. So I hope that I helped you guys, <laughs> I hope that I helped you guys and I answer a lot of your questions. Like I said, I'm going to try to do sometime a video about, um, animal health care, organic animal health care, treat animals like cows and stuff. Um, sick ones organically how to do it so I'm gonna do a video on that but um, say I hope I answered all your questions and um, I mean that's, that's all I could do I'm, I'm <laughs> but if you're gonna th if you're thinking about going organic transition to organic you know now would be the time to do it start the sooner you start the better you're gonna start this spring go out and find yourself if you're gonna if you need you know, go to auction sales. Maybe you could find cultivators on there. If you could find a rotary hole in an auction sale, you can buy them new. Um, I know a place specifically in Minnesota, Benson, Minnesota, Lorenz Manufacturing. Lorenz Manufacturing. Um, they sell um, rotary holes. They sell or brand new rotary holes. They sell brand new cultivators. You can get them in wide, narrow, whatever you need. They sell them. Go to their website, Lorenz Manufacturing. Um, they're headquartered right over there in Benson, Minnesota, not just about an hour east of here. So uh, you have options, you know, or go to equipment sales, uh, used equipment sales. They have them on there too. Um, I know it's a lot of a lot of food for thought, but you got time to digest it between now and spring. So how about go for it? You know, you know. We, it was a leap of faith when we went, but we went and did it anyway. We jumped in head first and went went all the way. So we knew we had to, but like I say, we had all the same questions. I had all the same questions you guys had, but you have the benefit of the doubt because I'm giving you my knowledge. So, <laughs> so anyways, but anyways, I got to go here. So... <clears throat> If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Like I say, you have any questions, drop them down in the comment section below. I'm going to try and post some links to these places and down below in the description. I'm probably going to divide this video up into 15-minute segments, maybe 30-minute. Maybe I'm just going to do a poll and see what you guys say before I even post this. And, um, yeah. Anyways, if you haven't hit have not hit that subscribe button go ahead hit that subscribe button tap the little bell at the top you get an instant notification and uh please check me out on instagram and twitter at organic dairyman check out all my other videos and um thanks everybody so much for watching um i appreciate all all my subscribers i appreciate each and every one of you um if you like this video too share it with a friend if you know something that's interested in please share it and um, I guess that's all I could think of to say. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope I didn't bore you to death. I hope I educated you. Or I hope I didn't lose you. And um, But anyways, so I'll catch you later.